What's going to happen at the end of the universe? Is this what this beautiful pug is thinking about? The end of the era, the end of the universe, the black dwarf supernova? Well, according to Google, possibly, because that's exactly what shows up when you look up black dwarfs, and that's actually the only reason I use this picture. Anyway, today we're going to be exploring the hypothetical idea of end of the era and end of the universe, but not really the end. We're going to be talking about time that's actually even very difficult to explain. Approximately Google years from now. That's right, Google. The number, not the website. And by the way, the website is named after this number. Google is this. It's 10 to the power of 100. Which, according to Wikipedia, looks like this. So, this many years in the future, there aren't going to be a lot of interesting events happening. Mostly because by that time, all of the stars will have mostly disappeared, turning into the remnants, and even the black holes will most likely have evaporated. And so what's going to be left behind are the black dwarfs and possibly certain neutron stars. We don't actually exactly know if neutron stars will remain by then, but the assumption right now is that they're still going to be around. Everything else though is going to be for the most part gone. There's going to be no stars, all of the galaxies will have spread apart too far apart from each other, and due to the expansion of the universe, even within galaxies, individual stars will move away from each other to the point where nothing will be seen except for the actual star itself. In other words, every single star, every single object in the universe will be completely by themselves. At least that's one of the potential explanations to the end of the universe, or the era near the end of the universe. But at this point, one of the most persistent objects in the universe, the white dwarfs, will have already become black dwarfs. In other words, by then they will become these very very large crystallized structures, extremely cold structures, but structures that can still actually go supernova. At least according to this recent paper. And this paper explores this idea of ancient era or ancient universe supernova, also known as black dwarf supernova. In other words, if we were to try to visualize what this paper is talking about, it goes as follows. So this is the closest white dwarf to us, this is Sirius B, and within the next trillion years, it might cool down a little bit. It might actually start looking a little bit more like this. As the temperature starts decreasing even more, the colors will obviously start changing, and first it's going to become a brownish star, and then eventually turn into the almost invisible black dwarf. Here it's actually very difficult for us to visually see what's happening, but another way of looking at it would be by taking a white dwarf in Universe Sandbox and by lowering its temperature to the lowest possible point. So here is maybe what a crystallized black dwarf, former white dwarf, might look like. Although more realistically, we shouldn't really be seeing any stars here, so this object should be completely by itself. And this is what scientists sometimes refer to as the heat death of the universe. But I'm going to bring back the background just because it kind of looks cool that way. Anyway, so black dwarfs at some point will pretty much be the only things left in the universe, but in the observable universe for each individual object, they're going to be the only thing. In other words, as I mentioned previously, because of the expansion of the universe, there's going to be nothing else left for each of these objects. They're going to be the only things in the vicinity in their own observable universe. It's actually kind of hard to wrap your head around, but that's kind of what we think is going to happen, assuming of course the universe keeps expanding. But according to this new paper and according to the mathematics in it, the black dwarfs are not actually the end of the universe just yet, because they might still go supernova. And the way that the scientist behind this paper was able to find out all of this is by realizing that inside of these crystallized objects, there are still going to be a lot of quantum effects going on, including very very slow quantum tunneling effect that will eventually transform some of the iron on the inside into other components such as for example manganese or chromium-56, both of which will capture more and more electrons from inside the white dwarf. And this is kind of important to understand because for the most part white dwarfs are essentially these huge huge pieces of electron degeneracy, electron gas that's inside of the white dwarf under extreme pressures almost to the point where it's about to explode. And with certain white dwarfs, when this limit is reached, that's when they explode creating type 1a supernova. 
But if these electrons start disappearing one by one, such as for example if they're being captured by something, the mass needed for the supernova to initiate will also start decreasing. In other words, as more and more electrons are being captured through the tunneling effects inside the white dwarf, and by the way this is an extremely extremely slow process, the limit required for the supernova to happen is going to slowly decrease as well. And this means that even though the mass of these black dwarfs will not change, the limit at which supernova might happen is going to slowly decrease with time. In the universe today, a typical white dwarf will go supernova when it reaches a certain mass. We refer to this as the Chandrasekhar limit. Normally it happens like this. It basically captures some of the mass from the partner star, and once the limit is reached, it just goes supernova and explodes. But this paper also suggests that the limit itself can be lowered through essentially the tunneling of electrons away from the white dwarf. Which means that if you wait long enough, at some point even the black dwarfs will suddenly start exploding. And this is the interesting part of this paper because nobody has ever really hypothesized if black dwarfs are going to stay there forever or if they are also going to explode as well. But this is true so far of only the most massive black dwarfs, or technically white dwarfs. For example, Sirius B that I previously showed you is most likely not going to go black dwarf supernova, simply because even today it just doesn't have enough mass in it to reach that point where it's definitely going to become unstable. According to the scientists in this paper, up to about 1.2 masses of the sun white dwarfs, and nothing below that is probably going to experience this. And in this case, it might even take much, much, much longer than Google years. As a matter of fact, for the less massive white dwarfs that become black dwarfs, the number of years you have to wait is really difficult to explain. It's essentially 10 to the power of 32,000 years. That is beyond human comprehension of how long this is. And by then, we don't even know if the universe is still going to be around. But the more massive white dwarfs, the ones that are close to their limit already, are going to go supernova in about Google years, which, according to some theories, might also be beyond the age of the universe as well. Nevertheless, this means that approximately 1% of all of the stars today will experience these black dwarf supernova. Of all of the stars out there today, about 1% of the stars are eventually going to become the white dwarfs. And that basically means any star that's under about 10 masses of our own sun. Other stars will either become brown dwarfs, or they might turn into remnants like neutron stars or black holes. But this 1% of stars, according to this idea, will definitely go supernova at some point in the future. But that's of course assuming that we understand subatomic particles and quantum physics well enough to predict the future of the universe so many years ahead. And that's of course a question we can't really answer right now because we might need to study the universe much much longer and understand it a little bit better first. But one of the more important things coming out of this paper is the idea of fusion. Normally we think of fusion as something happening inside very highly pressurized and extremely hot conditions such as for example inside our sun. But this paper shows that fusion can also happen during extremely cold conditions it just happens much, much, much slower to the point where we don't even observe it anymore. But it happens using methods somewhat similar to how it happens inside the sun. And speaking of our own sun, unfortunately, unlike other white dwarfs, which of course our sun will become, it's not really going to have enough mass to go supernova either. Which means that our sun is going to be one of these less lucky black dwarfs that's just going to remain crystallized for eons and eons to come. But all of these, of course, are really, really big assumptions and are based on our current understanding of physics. Science, however, does advance in leaps, so maybe in the next few decades we'll actually change this once again and think of all of this in very different terms. For now, though, it does seem to make sense and it does seem to suggest that these so-called black dwarf supernova are going to happen in their own little bubbles of the observable universe. Unfortunately, there will be no one else to witness it. All of these supernova are going to happen completely isolated from one another. There's going to be no one and nothing there to witness them. That's somewhat sad and somewhat scary. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, check out the paper I mentioned in the description below, and maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe subscribe, and maybe help support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now as well. 
Either way, come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And that is a black dwarf that I would definitely want to play with right now.